Yeah, is the Fableman's movie a, a true story? We're going to explore that today um, with our movie guru, aficionado, reviewer person, Steve Goodman, who is a lawyer and who really likes movies and writes a blog about it, as a matter of fact. Uh, welcome to your show, Steve. Well, thank you. Thank you. So today we're going to we're going to do uh, the Fablemans, and it's very interesting that they chose the Fablemans as the name. That's a, a fictitious name, but it sounds a lot like um, Spielberg, doesn't it? Spiel, Spiel, tell a story. Fablemans, fable, tell a fable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think the the heart of this is, as you watch this movie, you keep thinking about the fact: is this a true? Or is it not true? To what degree is it autobiography? And to what degree is it just simply an interesting story being told by an excellent filmmaker? Uh, that that keeps coming up as, as you watch the film. Um, the the movie itself can be divided into into three parts. You have the the opening seg segment as uh, as a young child. Then you have his, his teenage years, and then you have a, a third segment, which is very different when he's actually, when the family moves to Northern California um, and then his high school with a little bit of a postscript in terms of a uh, interview with, with John Ford. And the question has come up, did, did uh, Spielberg really have that interview with John Ford? So you've got some very interesting elements that are occurring as this movie unfolds. It, it, it opens with, well, the Spielberg character's name is, is Sammy for, in the movie. And the in the opening sequence, the, 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 the camera is focused on Sammy as his parents are talking to him, to, to getting him to be relaxed as he's, as they stand in line to, to go see of all things, a movie. Uh, the movie is The Greatest Show on Earth, which was a Cecil DeMille film. Um, best as I can remember, it's been decades since I saw that film. I, don't, I wasn't particularly impressed by, the, by that particular film. Um, but they're talking to him, trying to make him calm. It's real clear Sammy was, was not, it was not his idea to go, go see a movie. But in but, the movie, in the movie, there's a train wreck. Am I right? And yeah, that's what I was going to get to. That, that. That's what actually triggers this. After the 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 opening sequence, and they and then and they they show the the train wreck scene from the the Cecil de DeMille film. Then the next scene is back at his home, at their home in New in New Jersey, and. The, the time is de, 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 is de, 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 excuse me de, December of uh, 1952, and it's not real clear um, it, as to exactly how old Sammy is when they're in, in in terms of this particular sequence. But based on things you learn, particularly back when we, when, you, when you get to the high school, it's it's, it's presumed these would be six years old. At the, at the time he's he's seen the, this particular person. Well, that, that sounds like the same age um, that Spielberg would have been. Um, when Spielberg um, uh, had a, um, a, a promotional panel on this, which was uh, when it came out, which is a few months ago, he said he was 75 then. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they give the date of when he's, of, of, of when he's in line to see the movie but but there's no real comment about about age and you, you kind of work backwards because in the, at the high school they, they they say he graduated in 1964 from from high school so using that as as the trigger date you, you kind of work backwards and you get six um that's probably the age when i first saw my my film my first film um i to have no remembrance of what that my first film was, but you know back back then when you went to the movies, you got a film, you got a cartoon, and you got a, a serial um, that would bring you back each week because it was uh, 
ongoing episodes. And interesting enough, I do remember scenes from the serials. I have absolutely no remembrance of any of the movies I would have seen back then. Did do you have any idea, Jay, when you first saw a movie? I remember there was a camel in the movie. My uncle took me and my brother. We went together to see this movie with a camel. My brother turned to me and he said, I want a Clark bar, which at the time was using camels to advertise oh. um, its Clark bars. That's all I remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just remember um, on, on, on Saturdays, um, my mother giving me, because the movies weren't that, that expensive back then, some change and it would, would get me into the theater and be able to get a snack and and just be able to sit back and spend a few hours because at least two probably more like three mm -hmm. at, at the movie theater on a saturday afternoon but as to the the the, the incident with the, with the train in the movie um what, what happens is spielberg is go goes to bed wakes up and then and it shouts out that he now knows what he wants as his Hanukkah gift. It, it's, a, it's a train set. And the the parents get the train set thinking that it was just simply the, the train themselves in and the, the old Lionel train system, you know, which which were fun. I, I remember having one of those. Um but and instead it was it was the crash. It was actually it was the actual crash that really um, got Sammy interested in uh, in wanting this particular train set, and the the mother um, knew that it was not going to be something tolerated that, that in terms of him crashing the the, the trains because obviously um, they're not they're not going to last very very long, so she suggests that they they do one crash and they film it and that's what they do and that's actually the trigger point for spielberg to start his film career was was filming this crash scene from the train so it, it's it's a very very interesting story well the review the reviews steve said it was touching and, and yeah. beautiful and the script was beautiful and touching did you find it that way? And if so, why? Because it was such a family interaction. It, it's real clear through this this movie because they they actually have a, a very short Hanukkah scene with the gifts and and so forth. Um, that this is a, a very middle class Jewish family living in in New Jersey, um, in in a very Christian neighborhood, and. That is a theme that, that Spielberg comes back to again, particularly when you get to the the, the last third of the movie. Um, he talks about uh, anti-Semitism, and then the connection between his ex experiences around anti-Semitism in various places they lived, and Schindler's List, which was a you know a tremendously powerful uh, statement about the Holocaust. Now, I found it interesting because I I I thought from looking at Schindler's list that Spielberg was a religious Jewish person and his family was a religious Jewish family. But I, I suspect that the movie did not depict him as religious. Um, they depicted him, however, as part of a Ukrainian family, which I thought was very interesting, especially now. Um, that's really um, not something that, that that he runs with in terms of anything with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's real clear that right right from the beginning that this is a Jewish family telling a Jewish story. A couple of things really struck me in reading up on this movie. One is, uh, you know, you, you asked the seminal question, uh, is, is it true? And I think the answer is, in part, it's uh, semi-autobiographical is what it is. Um, and further, that it was made during COVID. It was made in 2021, I think. And, and, and what's interesting about that is that there's a lot of precious movies about people, famous people, making movies about their lives in this period, in the COVID period. And you wonder, you know, and, and of course, some of them are purely autobiographical. 
documentaries, you know, per se, and others are semi-autobiographical. Um, but there's a question on whether there's a vanity element here. There's, you know, I guess he decided he wanted to give give credit, give give some, um, you know, credit to his parents and his home and his family and his youth and all that. But it's it's his story. That's what it is. I mean, you might find things in there that are fictitious, like the name, for example, and some of the events, maybe. But this, to me, struck struck me. The question has to be asked: Was this precious? Uh, was this his legacy? A statement? You know, he's into legacy. Uh, Spielberg, um, you know, did, for example, the Schindler's List movie as a matter of legacy. And a lot of things he's done included, um, you know, elements of his childhood and things he wanted to leave behind for posterity. And I think this has to be in, especially in that category, don't you think? I'll give you an example of legacy. He has his girlfriend say that that, that uh, one of the reasons she enjoyed being with him was because he's a great kisser. Um, that, uh, yeah, you know, you know it, it, other than a little pat on the back for himself of being a great kisser, I mean, he really didn't, didn't need that particular. No. So, um, but the whole scene with the with with the girlfriends, which which occurs in the the latter third, um, is you know there there's some real question in terms of just how how accurate that that is. The interaction was a uh, it was she, she tried to convert him to. To, to being a Christian. Um, and there's a great scene where she has the two of them where, where they're supposed to breathe in the breathe, breathe in Christ. And it immediately leads to a very passionate uh, set, set of kisses between the two of them. Um, so it, it, that whole scene. Well, there's a lot of privacy scenes. things in there. He talks about his parents and he reveals things that are not necessarily complimentary. In fact, they uh, they had a very strange falling out. And uh, years later, I don't know if it was in the movie or not, but years later, um, the husband, who uh, Spielberg, I forget his first name, um, wh who was a successful tech entrepreneur. Right. Yes, he was a successful tech entrepreneur. And he was, seemed like a nice guy in all this. Um, he found that his, uh, his wife left him. And uh, as I recall, Spielberg was 19 at the time. That must have been traumatic for him. And later on, he found that the reason that the marriage dissolved um, was, was because his mother was having an affair uh, with the father's best friend. That's kind of also traumatic. And what's interesting, too, in terms of revealing private things, and I don't know if this came out of the movie or just the reviews, but later on, not too long ago, they reconciled. Um, and, and it's a really in and out kind of marriage. Um, and that must have been troublesome for him. Um, but at the same time, he, he revealed a good part of that in the movie. And when, the, you know, one of the reviewer asked him, you know, weren't, weren't you concerned you'll be, you know, making your parents unhappy? Uh, he said something like, no, truth. They're okay with truth. And that, that's a central thing. It's so interesting that when he speaks of this movie and when he speaks of filmmaking, he's talking about finding and revealing the truth. And yet, the movie isn't all true. How about that? How about that? But <laughs> the particular sequence is, is actually in the movie where um, he's, his, his father asked him to, to put together a little film on, on a camping trip that the family had taken together. And as he's putting together the the, the, the film of the, the camping, all of a sudden he's noticing that his mother is walking hand in hand away from the group with um, what what is described as Bert's best friend. Um, Bernie and he, he the, the two of them are, are are going off and that that scene uh Spielberg has has been quoted as saying is is accurate that that actually 
is is what he what he saw. Um, at that particular point, he probably was either 17 or 18. He would not have been 19 yet, um, but he was still he was he was I think he was in his senior year in high school um, when when that occurred, and the 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 the, the kids were told apparently that it was the father that wanted the divorce, but in fact it was the mother who wanted it, and she then went on and and married um, the um, the so-called best 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 friend, and and remained married for a number of years. Yeah, until they reconciled. This is a very interesting life story. So one yeah. of the things that came out for me, Steve, um, is that uh, his mother was a, a an accomplished concert pianist. Yes, um, and both parents were accomplished. Um, she was the critical person in terms of uh, letting him find creativity. I think his father wanted him to do something more mundane, but his mother said, "No, you know, go for it. Um, if you want to do film, do film." And they gave him room, or she gave him room, and encouraged him. And I think the message uh, that he's giving is he, he, he would not have been a filmmaker and a great filmmaker had it not been for her allowing him to, you know, to find his passion. Uh, and, that's, and that's very important in terms of you know, telling us what the family dynamic was and suggesting to all families um, that you can have a Spielberg on your hands if you just let him run. Uh, of course, that isn't necessarily true, but I, I think one of the elements that I saw in my reading on this is that um, you know anyone who is permitted by his family or her family to find his talent uh, can do better, uh, can be another Spielberg. Just let him, let him run, let him go, uh, let him find his 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 talent. And to me, that's a big takeaway from this movie, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The, the father viewed the, the, the filmmaking as, as simply a hobby, and it was not something that you can make a, a career out of. And that is a reoccurring theme through, throughout the movie. Uh, the, the mother um, was, was definitely a, a very highly skilled pianist, and actually, well, in in Phoenix, apparently it must have apparently appeared on TV a few times, you know, with with concerts and so forth. Uh, that that Spielberg kind of hints at, but she clearly has some mental health issues, um, and is 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 uh, there, there there's some real problems. Mm -hmm. What's also interesting throughout the movie. Neither, even though it starts from when he's six and goes up through about the age of twenty, um, the parents don't don't age. They they look exactly the same at the end of the movie as as what they looked like right at the beginning. And then well, I'm sure there's a meaning in that, don't you think? He was trying to he was trying to tell us something by not having them age. He he had complete control over the environment of this movie. Right. And uh, uh, and that that I suppose was a message to us that in his mind's eye, you know, you, you used the term remembrance a little while ago, and I'm reminded of Marcel Proust, one of my favorite French authors, who wrote Remembrance of Things Things Past, Recherche de Tant Perdue, and it, it it talks about um, the importance of your childhood and how you need to look back at it. You cannot appreciate your you know your life yourself your accomplishments, your, the definition of you without looking at your childhood. So Spielberg looks at his childhood and he sees his parents frozen in amber. They were always thus. That's isn't that interesting. That's the way he sees them. So he lets them be ageless. <laughs> yeah. And they, they, they clearly are. They clearly are. Um, but what, what's it, you know, the film? It, takes on a whole different texture in that last third when they moved to Northern California. There, there may have been some anti-Semitism that he was running into in, in Phoenix, where the family, well, the film starts in New Jersey, 
dad get father get gets promotions, get gets new jobs, goes to work for GE, they move to Phoenix. And then there's a whole series of interactions that, that occur there. Um, and then he gets a job with IBM and they move to Northern California. It's when they move up to Northern California that, that suddenly the the anti-Semitism just is is becomes front and center. Um with one of the high school uh, students just just being an out and out bigot um, and using language that uh, is is as anti-Semitic as you can get. And they fight. Uh, they fight, right? And there is a there is a fight. What's interesting is the the males that are at the high school are all passive as as, as to when these anti-Semitic remarks are, are being made. Um, the, the females are much more, you know, hey, you shouldn't be talking that way. It's not that you keep, they weren't criticizing them thinking that way, which is it wasn't something you should be verbalizing. You shouldn't be talking that way. But that's all on the for the, for the females, and the males are reacting very differently. Um, it's 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 a neighborhood that he's moving into that I can relate in some ways because I I, I grew up in, in suburbia in Southern California. Um, Spielberg comments that as far as he can remember, there weren't any other Jews in, in the high, at, at, at the high school. I'm kind of the same way other than my three cousins and my sister I'm not aware of any other Jews that, that were in, in, in the high school that I went to. Um, and I also remember thinking at various times, gee, it's probably a good thing that I don't have an obviously Jewish name, given some of the remarks that, that I would, would be hearing um, at various times. Though I never ran across anybody as anti-Semitic as, as the character that Spielberg presents in the movie. Now, it's, it's interesting because we see and hear um, all this, you know, rhetoric about anti-Semitism these days, we, we hear the stats, it's of great concern. But the fact is, it existed when you and I were kids. It well, was always there. Existed, yeah. You know, it, yeah, and, and we grew up with it. Um, wh- wh- I, I grew up in uh, Queens County in New York, and um, a, lot, a lot of Jewish people there. Also a lot of Italians and Irish, by the way, uh, and Asians. Um, but there was anti-Semitism, and, you know, you had to deal with it. Um, it it wasn't it wasn't a new thing when it came up with Trump. Uh, anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to go into um, attention to detail. You know, one of the reasons, Steve, that I like opera is because a good opera always has attention to detail. And I think one of the reasons that the country and the world like Steven Spielberg's movies, uh, think of any one of them, is attention to detail. He's a director uh, foremost. And right. he watches every single little detail. And in this movie, he directs it. And he's heavily invested because it's about him. So he, yeah. he attends to every single detail. And one of the interesting parts is his home. And I guess it was in New Jersey where he recreated his home from the 50s, right on down to the books on the shelf, um, the, the plates, the table, the silverware, everything in the house. Well, it wasn't available. It's not like he held on to it all those years. It's just that he had people who helped him recreate it accurately from photographs of his home back in the 50s. Uh, that's the, the mark of a great director. You can look around and it transports you back to that time. If you look carefully, you're there. You're there with him. Um, and I think, uh, therefore, I think he, he put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it was kind of a, a COVID vacation, if you will, from other filmmaking. I think he took a break from other larger films, although this is a large film too, um, and, and studied his own life and recreated the environment of his own life. Uh, what an experience that is. I, I go back to the fact that it's precious and maybe vain in some ways, um, but it is a tremendous effort. When you bring his talent, um, to a film, any film, especially this one, you get a tremendous result. Uh, the production values here were, were as good as any film he's ever made. Yeah, you even had 
his, his dad did he earned some extra money re, to, to, to re, re, repair work as to TVs. And you have a bunch of um, old t TVs that are just sitting on shelves that um, they are there because um, that's what the dad did apparently on the weekends to, to make some extra money. Um, and finding those old TVs was, was probably not easy at this point. Um, so, uh, yeah. Steve, do you think that uh, Spielberg's uh, effort here, the making of this film, which is special, will be remembered and He's doing all he can to promote it, by the way. He's not sitting on his stuff over this. He's, he's going out there and talking about it. Uh, another, you know, point of dedication to his family. Um, but do you think it changed him to have this, I want to call it, you know, experience of making a film, this expiation of, um, of memories long lost, long, of times long gone by? Uh, what do you think it does to people um, to have this, autobiographical experience and share it effect effectively with the world? Well, I can actually um, answer that one by, by giving an example. When I was thinking about making some notes in terms of for, for this particular presentation and, and the fact that um, at the high school, the, you know, there, there weren't other Jewish girls that you could be dating. And, and I started thinking um, for the first time in decades, I remembered Gee, right at the end there at the high school, the the, the lady I was uh, dating was was Jehovah's Witness. Um, we obviously never talked about religion, and then, so we were able to to keep the relationship going during during that senior year. But um, yeah, I think it does bring back a whole lot of memories that are very interesting. Well, it did for Proust. I, I swear to God, I kept thinking of Proust while I'm uh, reviewing this. And the other thing is, um, you know, why, why do we care? Why do we care about Spielberg's life and times? Why do we care about Spielberg's childhood? You know, there's so many other things to care about. Why that? I think a lot of people have a lot of different answers, but I'll, I'll tell you one answer that, that comes to me, and which means I will study this film more again. And that is, it teaches you about high quality film. It teaches you how to be a storyteller a fableman, if you will, and how to be a director. So if you have half an interest in making films and the number of people who have that interest grows by leaps and bounds every day in this world because of the technology, if you care about being a director and making films, this is a, is a, this is a, 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 a precis. Um, this is something you can learn from. It's also an example that, that reality is quite often even stranger than, than, than fiction. Um, I mean, you have things like with, with, with again, with, with the mother, um, she brings home as a pet, a monkey. Um, the, it apparently helped her with interacting with the, with the monkey in terms of her own mental illness while everybody else was off to school and the husband was working and so forth. Um, but the, the monkey scenes, um, Spielberg says that's, that's all true. That was not, not made up. There's also a scene in the movie where there's in, it takes place in Phoenix where there's a, a tor tornado. Um, the the mother grabs the three kids. Um, Spielberg had two sisters, has two sisters. Um, he grabs and puts them in the car, and she drives she drives to the tor towards the tornado while. Well, why he's got cars going, everybody else is going in the opposite direction. And then when she really gets close to it, she all of a sudden realizes what danger she, she's put the, the her, her own family by by doing what, what, she, what she did. Um, it's actually a very excellent acting performance by, by, by the mother. Um, but also then reminds you of some scenes like in Jurassic Park, where there were the kids are reacting to, to the, uh, um, to, to, to what's occurring. Um, so it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think no, it, it reminds me of very, very therapeutic probably for, for Spielberg in a lot of ways. But it proves mm -hmm. up something that is uh, central to all his movies. And as he said a number of times, um, all his movies have something of him in them. Uh, he takes his personal experience, his personal life, and he puts parts of it in every movie he makes. Steve, we're out of time. 
thank you very much for this uh, review. I really appreciate it. I hope people go out and see this movie. Uh, real quick, what rating do you give it on a scale of one to ten? Oh, it's up there like with an eight, an eight or eight, eight, eight point five, almost a nine. Okay. And not not a ten, but but it's uh, it, no, it's it's definitely entertaining. It so it's, it's, it's a smidgen long. You know, it's two and a half hours. Um, oh, you know, that is a, that is not necessarily a good thing. Anyway, yeah. Steve, Steve Goodman. Um, the attorney and film aficionado will be back with more films uh, with Goodman's Garage. That's the name of the show. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.